Bison's going to win. Big one, 84-72 over UNF. Welcome back courtside in Allen Arena. Jonathan and Justin Seaman. And joining us across the way, Romeo Ferguson. Romeo had one of those uh, season-high games here today for the Bisons as he came away with, uh, as the Bisons came away with this big win. Yeah, 21 points for Ferguson uh, tonight. And, Romeo, this is one of those games you're playing against a UNF team. You know they, they run that zone defense, a little different than what maybe you're used to seeing. It, it, it maybe took you guys just a little bit of time to adjust, but but once you got going, you finally found some cracks in that zone. Uh, yes, sir. Once once we got comfortable, uh, we knew Greg, they was going to have to key in on Greg, and then we had the two guards come in um, going baseline. So it was either one-on-one -on -one with me and sign. So I just had to make the right play. What was your decision process to come to Lipscomb uh, after graduating, going uh, from Lemoyne Owen uh, down to uh, Lincoln Memorial, that is, not Lemoyne Owen, from Lincoln Memorial down to Belmont Abbey, and then made a decision to come to Lipscomb? Um, yeah, I just wanted to challenge myself. Um, I talked to Coach Acuff on the phone, and I knew immediately this was the right place for me. Um, he welcomed me with open arms. Everybody on the team welcomed me with open arms, and I'm just blessed to be here. How difficult has it been for you? I mean, I, you haven't noticed it. When, you, when we look at the stats, you, you've just been kind of Mr. Consistent as far as scoring double figures in all but two games. But, I mean, it, it's been difficult on everyone through COVID, but you didn't really get a great look at uh, kind of being able to gel with your team almost until you guys kind of just started playing games. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, my teammates made it easy for me, man. Um, I know I was a new guy and um, I overcame obstacles, but – I got to credit all of my teammates, man, my coaching staff, man. They, they, didn't never, they never made me feel like an outsider or anything like that. So, um, again, it was just me just overcoming obstacles, and my teammates were just there for me all the, all the way through. Well, we just saw some big threes, but that big dunk was a big thing. I don't think that grin left your face for five or ten minutes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We was, we was late on that. The guys are joking about me. I haven't got one all year, so. <laughs> Was there ever any talk to you that there was a guy from High Point, North Carolina, called Michael Buckland that they needed to replace, and they went down to Burlington, got a guy that just kind of stepped in and uh, kind of picked up the slack? Um, nah, I mean, I'm not trying to fill in nobody else's shoes. I'm just trying to be myself. And Coach Acuff uh, told me that from the get-go. He was like, just be yourself and just have fun. So that's what the mentality I try to have every game. Well, Romeo, this is your, your third time now to see this kind of back-to-back -back situation. Uh, it's good to get that first win, but you know how important it is to refocus because 5 o'clock is going to come quick tomorrow night. Uh, yes, sir. And I, I told the guys is, is, uh, we got to go 2-0. Um, that's our mentality every, every weekend. So um, we, we're going to celebrate this win in the locker room, and then once we leave, we have to refocus. Well, you are refocused. You are leaving your own mark. Great game here today. Congratulations on your season high. Come back and do it again tomorrow against UNF. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Congratulations to Romeo Ferguson. Big game for him here today as the Bisons win this one 84 to 72. Well, Lipscomb had a little advantage with the shooting percentage here today. Three-point shooting. UNF did what we expected them to do. They started picking it up in the second half, and they ended up shooting in the game 11 of 33, while Lipscomb shot 6 of 20. Rebounding, Lipscomb with the advantage. The turnovers, especially key in the early part of this ball game to help Lipscomb get that first early lead. Had the 15-point lead in the second half as Coach Acuff joins us now across the way. But, Coach, we know how fast – a lead like that can evaporate in a game like this. Well, if we didn't, we sure proved it tonight, didn't we? <laughs> I mean, we're, we're up 15, and we get a really, really good shot uh, from our best shooter. If it goes in, we're up 18. Two minutes and 30 seconds later, it's tied. Um, and, and we had told our guys that, you know, last week against Stetson, they were down 12 with two minutes to go and hit a three to go up by two inside the last 30 seconds. I mean, they just when, – when you can shoot the three at all five spots like they can, the game's never over. And uh, they made some really tough shots to their credit. We have a ton of respect for them, Coach Driscoll and the job he does. Um, but it was a really good win for us tonight, guys, for sure. Well, Coach, you got some clutch performances from a couple of guys. Romeo Ferguson, who we just talked to, a season I 21, thought he was key in the first half. Thought second half he was consistent as well, but Parker Hazen. Uh, career high 17 points for him tonight I, I thought they were both great you know uh, Rome is really really good at that mid-range kind of high foul line elbow jump shot and and he made some of the what well, we felt good about that going into the game and he made some big shots he also got some big rebounds 21 points eight assists three I mean 21 points eight rebounds three assists and uh, Parker had like five or seven straight points where he gets offensive rebounds two times, makes the free throws, and then bangs in a three. Um, those were big plays for us. But I, but I tell you what, too, guys, 
I tell you who was really, really, really good defensive was Jake Wolf. Carter Henderson is one of the best players we played against all year. I think he is fantastic. And I thought uh, between he and Greg, Greg on Placer, those two kids are really good players. And I thought we had great efforts from both our guys tonight uh, guarding those two guys because it, it, it takes that because they're fantastic. You think KJ has to score all the time. He didn't deny other guys. You got four and double figures, but yet he got seven big rebounds for you. He did. You know, th that's the thing. Uh, KJ is, is he's just learning, and the, hopefully all our guys are learning. You can impact the game without scoring. And, um, I mean, KJ's turning into a really, really good all-around player. You know, and that's as he matures, that's a big deal. And I was proud of Hassan for walking up there and making his free throws tonight. Um, that was big. You know, we were kind of maybe, you know, getting a little bit of a little rough spot, and he walks up and makes two. And he's worked on it, and so I'm real happy for him. He could have got frustrated because of some of the shots not falling early. He got a little physical. We have some delays because they're trying to figure out what fouls were what and what. But yet at the end, he kind of had that cool hit. Yeah, you know, he is. He's, he's, he's a good player, and, you know, you're going to get everybody's best punch. And he's so big sometimes when he gets fouled, or I think he gets fouled, it may not show up because they can't move him. And, uh, you know, a lot of times when you're a bigger guy, sometimes that happens. But, you know, he played good. Um, you know, it was a good team win for us tonight. But, you know, this whole thing, this double back, to, this back-to-back -back deal in less than 24 hours, it's, it's just almost like it's halftime. Um, we're thankful <laughs> to win that first game. But we know we got to come right back in here tomorrow and get prepared and and uh, and play a really good North Florida team. You know, their record isn't what you know. Maybe some people might think, well, that's not. They're not as good. Listen, they have been wiped out by COVID. That, that's tonight. They still have one kid that's not here, but they missed Hendricks most of the first semester. They missed a lot of their guys, and uh, they're getting them back. And I mean, they're they're going to be a tough out for everybody the rest of the way, and they'll be a tough out against us tomorrow. I was going to say, Coach. It's hard for our fans and everybody to really understand how big COVID has impacted all these different teams. It is, and then also every year they play a brutal schedule. Mm -hmm. You look at their schedule, it's been really, really difficult. And um, we just have a ton of respect for them. Like I say, we're halfway home. And uh, we just we're trying to get a good night's rest tonight, get watch film, and and try to get ready to go tomorrow. Um, I, I tell you, you know, I tell you guys, I think one thing I want to say too. You know, we talked to our guys a lot about being ready when your number gets called. How about Jacob Hobbs coming yeah, in and really yeah, helped he, us tonight? He did. Thought Jacob did a really nice job for us. So, um, good team win. Uh, I guess we get to do it again tomorrow at five o'clock, right? Yeah, we'll <laughs> be back at five, Coach, and I'll wave at you from way over here. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. Appreciate <laughs> you. All right. All right. We'll see you, Coach. Coach Lenny Acup with us as the Bisons win in their first matchup against North Florida, 82-72. to 72. Back to do it again tomorrow at 5 o'clock. And then after that, Florida Gulf Coast will be coming to town, and then the Bisons will be headed down to Deland to take on Stetson. To keep up with everything going on with Lipscomb Sports, check it out at LipscombSports.com.